What's up everybody? My name is Joe Brown and this is Heresy Financial. Many people right now are worried about inflation, especially given record high prices and valuations across markets, whether you look at bond markets or equity markets or real estate and the fact that the economy, governments are so over leveraged and it looks like central bankers have both the capacity and the will to print enough, to purchase enough, to prevent any fall in prices because especially with debt, if there's a fall in prices, that leads to a spike in interest rates that would render the economy and governments insolvent, leading to a deflationary death spiral collapse. And since all that's needed to prevent that is pressing a button, it looks like, especially in light of the accelerating spending, I mean, just look at the infrastructure bill that just passed the Senate recently, it looks like the only thing that we're coming down the road on is inflation and more and more of it. This has led many to start looking for hedges against inflation. Now, this video is not, number one, about deflation. Number two, it's not about the best inflation hedge. It's not about alternative hedges to inflation. This video is about whether or not real estate performs well as a hedge against inflation. Ready? Let's dive in. Real estate in the United States is somewhat unique globally. It has basically the best financing options in the world with 30 year fixed rate mortgages being the norm. Not only that, but that is paired with some of the lowest down payment options available in the world. Now it's important to point out this is not due to free markets. This is due to a regulatory framework that has subsidized the housing market in the States. So in light of this, it's important to when you're looking back at history to look at parts of history that are as similar as possible to what you're uh, currently experiencing now to give you some clues about what you might experience in the future. So in light of that, we are going to look at how real estate responded during the 1970s in America. If you take a look at this chart, you can see what housing prices did adjusted for inflation over the last 100 years or so. And you can see that it shows that really adjusted for inflation, house prices did not fluctuate that much for a long time, including, and this is key, during the 70s. That means that during the 70s, massive inflation. When you adjust for that inflation, house prices stayed flat, which means that in nominal terms, house prices went up basically at the same pace of inflation. So if you bought a house for cash in 1970, in 1980, you go to sell that house. You're going to get cash back for it. You can buy basically the same amount of stuff as you could have with the amount that you paid for the house in 1970. So if it went from 100,000 to 200,000, you could buy the same amount in 1980 with 200,000 as you could buy in 1970 with 100,000. The same amount of house, the same amount of car, the same amount of food. Your purchasing power was preserved. You didn't make money, you didn't lose money. But if you bought a house with a mortgage, you did very well. Because remember, mortgages are fixed. You owe a specific number of dollars back. This meant that as the price of the home increased in dollar terms, the amount that you owed didn't change. Let's say you bought a home for $100,000 in 1970 and it increased to $150,000 by 1980 over 10 years. Again, if you use cash, that just tracks inflation. Your $150,000 in 1980 will buy you the same amount of stuff as $100,000 did in 1970. But if you only put $25,000 down for that $100,000 house, and then that house increases to $150,000 over the next 10 years, and you've had to put money into the house and you've had to make payments. So let's say you're $50,000 in, all in at the end, and then you sell. You're gonna walk away with $100,000 cash. That means you had a 100% return on your money. During that period of time, remember inflation was only 50%. So if you use fixed rate debt, to purchase an asset that tracks or keeps up with inflation, you actually gain purchasing power from inflation. Again, if you purchase something that increases in price by 50%, while at the same time you have 50% inflation, you don't have a gain in purchasing power, you don't have a loss of purchasing power. It simply keeps up, you preserve it. But if you finance it, if you borrow in order to make that purchase, the amount you owe stays the same while the price of the asset goes up, meaning that it pays off the debt for you, makes it easier to pay off that debt, erodes the value of the debt relative to the price of the asset you gain in purchasing power. Said another way, you got new dollars at a 
faster pace than those dollars were losing their purchasing power. Now, obviously, history does not repeat itself, and there are always more than a few factors influencing economic behavior and prices. And specifically with real estate, demographics are going to be by far the number one influencing factor and predictor of prices. Because if a country sees a massive exodus of its population and people are just leaving in droves, it doesn't matter what else happens. Prices of real estate are going to collapse. The new supply will far outpace any demand that still exists. So it's impossible to see the future, but we can look to the past to get clues to see how things happened in the past and say, okay, if a, B, and C are all factors that are very similar to things that are happening right now that we can get some idea of how, if something like that happens again, what the results will be. And the 1970s in the United States, specifically looking at real estate, is a fairly close comparison to what it looks like we are headed into in the future right now. In light of this, it does seem like real estate is a decent inflation hedge. If you own it outright, it'll basically keep up with inflation, preserve your purchasing power, other than the costs of maintenance associated with maintaining the property and leveraged real estate using fixed rate debt in order to purchase the property should result in an increase in purchasing power, meaning you make money when there's inflation that transfers wealth from the creditor to the debtor in that situation in an inflationary environment because the price goes up, but the amount of money owed stays the same. And finally, if you'd like to get started with real estate investing, you'd like to dip your toes in the water, you don't want to full out buy an investment property right now, you can get started with institutional grade real estate through platforms like Fundrise with as little as $10 at a time just to try it out and get started. I've got them linked in the description below. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.